Hi, Mike here from Celestial Fireglass with some quick tips for installing a natural gas burner for your outdoor fire pit. Whether you're making a fire pit or fire table, whether you're using a drop-in burner with a pan, a burner ring, or a complete CSA certified burner kit, the fundamentals of a natural gas installation are all the same. First, I want to emphasize that you should have your gas connections made by a qualified and licensed gas installer. Working with gas is dangerous, so you want to be sure the installation is done according to local building codes and is safe to operate. The purpose of this video is to give you a basic understanding of how a natural gas fire feature works, the components needed, and how everything fits together. This information will hopefully be helpful as you design and build your own gas fire pit or table. When designing your fire feature, you want to include at least two ventilation spots for any enclosed areas where gas can collect. Keep in mind that natural gas is lighter than air, so in planning the location of your ventilation points, they should be placed in the uppermost portion of the enclosure. This allows the gas to rise out. Now for a quick primer on gas fitting standards. There are two types of fittings used for gas fire features. These two types cannot be connected directly together without a coupling to convert the fitting types. One type of fitting used in many commercially made fire pits and barbecue grills is the flared fitting. These are easy to identify because they have a flared tip. This flared tip is what provides the seal for the gas. Since the flared tip is making the seal, the only purpose of the threads are to hold the flare tightly in place and help retain the seal. Since the threads aren't providing the seal, you don't want to use Teflon pipe tape when connecting flared fittings. The other type of fitting is a tapered fitting called NPT, commonly known as National Pipe Taper, which is a standard for tapered threads. Since NPT has tapered threads, the seal is provided directly by the threads. This means that the tighter you screw the threads in place, the tighter the seal. For NPT fittings, Teflon gas tape is always required. In the US and Canada, Teflon gas tape is colored yellow for easy identification. If you're trying to measure existing NPT sizes, you should know that the size is loosely based on the inside diameter of the pipe and not on the actual thread size. For example, the outside thread diameter for half inch NPT measures just over three quarters of an inch, which is the size used for most of our burners and components. With outdoor fire features, there are two types of burners commonly used. The first type is a burner ring. Burner rings provide a flexible option for many fire pits, such as a fire pit made with pavers or a custom fire bolt. This burner ring from Celestial Fireglass is made of stainless steel tubing with slightly inward facing holes on the top. It includes a half inch NPT inlet, which is reversible by moving the plug from one side to the other. This way, you can choose to install the burner with the holes facing either upwards or downwards. With natural gas, the choice is yours. Some people like to face the holes downwards to prevent water from entering, but it works either way. The second type of burner, which is the most popular and easiest to install, is a drop-in burner pan. Drop-in burner pans are very popular with fire tables because they include the burner and a pan in one assembly. This makes installation a breeze. Burner pans are installed by placing them into a cutout in your tabletop that's about an inch larger than the pan size. This will provide an extra half inch of spacing on all sides around the drop-in portion of the pan. That way, it can be easily placed into the cutout. Plus, it allows for some expansion and contraction during heating and cooling. Drop-in burner pans are held in place by their own weight. So other than dropping it in place, there's no other work required to mount the burner pan. The burner pan has a half inch NPT male fitting on the bottom. Natural gas fire pits require a gas pressure of between three and a half inches water column and seven inches water column. Water column, commonly referred to as WC, 
is the amount of gas pressure required to raise water in a vertical tube a given distance. As a frame of reference, 28 inches WC is equal to 1 PSI. Therefore, 3.5 inches WC is 1 eighth of a PSI, and 7 inches WC is 1 quarter of a PSI. The gas pressure within a house is typically around 7 to 15 inches WC, or around a quarter PSI, which allows for distribution of the gas throughout the dwelling. Your licensed gas installer will likely need to install a gas regulator, such as this one, to reduce the pressure. While natural gas fire pits run a range of 3.5 inches WC and 7 inches WC, the ideal pressure is closer to the 3.5 inches end of this range. If the pressure is too high, you can get a whistling noise from the key valve. This is because the key valve will try to reduce the pressure by passing the high pressure gas through a small hole. There are several types of hoses used for gas within an appliance. This one is a standard flex hose, which should be avoided. Standard flex hoses can cause a whistling noise due to the even spacing of the ribs along the hose length. This spacing causes an oscillation effect, which results in a high-pitched whistling sound. Not what you want to hear when you're trying to relax by your fire pit. This hose is a whistle-free flex hose. It's designed to prevent whistling noise by changing the rib spacing at various lengths along the hose. The change in rib spacing prevents the oscillation effect that causes the sound. The most common type of hose is a standard rubber gas hose. These won't whistle, since the inside is a smooth surface without any ribs. Rubber gas hoses typically come with most natural gas connection kits. To turn the gas on and control the flame height, you'll need a key valve. The key valve is a ball valve that mounts flush in your fire pit cabinet and uses a key to access the valve. To light your fire pit, you have two options, a standard stick lighter or a spark igniter. The spark igniter mounts into the drop-in burner pan using the optional plate that came with the pan. There are many natural gas connection kits available you should select a type that best fits your needs. I recommend the Celestial Natural Gas Connection Kit. It has the hoses and key valve needed to make your gas connection. It doesn't include the natural gas regulator or spark igniter. These are also available from Celestial Fire Glass. Another option is to purchase a CSA Certified Fire Pit Burner Kit. This complete kit meets rigorous safety standards and includes everything you need. It has the pan and burner, along with the hoses, flame control knob, spark igniter, and thermocouple. The spark igniter and thermocouple are located inside this cage. There's a hole directing the gas at the spark igniter, which enables the flame to light as soon as the gas is turned on. The thermocouple is a cool safety feature. If it doesn't sense the heat of the flame, it'll turn the gas off. The CSA kit doesn't include a pressure regulator, but your installer will likely have this part available. We at Celestial Fire Glass are committed to the success of your project. If you need help with determining what parts you'll need or how to install them, or if you want to troubleshoot a problem, give us a call. We're happy to assist. Our technical support team is based in Frederick, Maryland. They're available by phone and online from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time, Monday through Friday. Good luck with your natural gas fire pit installation, and we'll see you next time.